dipping of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. That's a long time. Amen. And when Jesus saw him lie, or just laying down, he's laying there. When Jesus saw him and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, Jesus saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered him, Listen to this phrase that he says. He says, Sir, I have no man. Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. On the same day was the Sabbath. Amen. I feel like God really wants to do a work in the remainder of this service tonight. Amen. I hope you feel that. I hope you believe it. Come on. I wonder if there's anyone come expecting. Amen. But I want to just preach for a little bit on this subject. Our job in His miracle. Our job in His miracle. Amen. Why don't we put our Bibles down? Why don't we lift our hands to the Lord in unity in this house? Come on, why don't we just let God have his way in the remainder of this service. God, we love you today, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we've come expecting that you're going to do great things. God, you've already done great things. Oh, Lord, but we believe that you're going to continue to do the work that you've come to do in this house. Oh, God, we give you praise. Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Well, I just want to say this from the get-go. If I raise my hands and you see a purple stain on my shirt, I know about it. <laughs> it happened today. <laughs> so if you're, if you're embarrassed for me, just, just know I already know. Praise God. Amen. Because I was told earlier while I was preaching that people saw it, and I was like, bless God, I wish I would have known. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I want to talk about the Lord here tonight for a little bit. Anyone who has ever taken time to read through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, amen, they will be familiar with the fact that Jesus Christ performed many, many miracles. Can I tell someone today that Jesus is in the miracle working business. Come on, we call him the miracle worker. And many of us here today can testify to the miracle working power of God. Amen. Come on, I wonder if there's anyone that can attest to what God's able to do. Come on, when you just call upon the name of the Lord, come on, he is still a miracle worker. He is still a miracle worker. Praise God. Amen. After taking a few, uh, taking a little bit of time in research and reviewing different sources, kind of came up with a figure, a number of listed miracles. That's a key phrase, listed miracles in Scripture that Jesus did. And it's somewhere around maybe 37, 38 in the Word of God that we see. Now I understand today, amen, that the amount of miracles recorded in Scripture is not exhaustive, amen, because John's gospel itself even says, uh, in John 21 and 25, it says, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written, amen. And obviously another factor that can come into counting his miracles is what a person defines as a miracle.
Amen. There's, there's different kinds of miracles that Christ would do. Amen. There would be physical miracles. There would be uh, the casting out of a devil. Amen. I count that as a miracle. Amen. There's, there's all sorts of things. He would deal with, with, with walking on water and he would deal with, with breaking of bread, feeding the 5,000. These are miracles that he did. But I believe today that when Christ was performing miracles, I just want to say he, was, he wasn't doing it as a magician. Amen. Jesus wasn't just doing tricks. Amen. And he wasn't even just trying to wow people. Oh, look what I can do. And I'll even go as far as saying this. His miracles weren't even just helping the people he did the miracle for. Amen. Stick with me here. But John 20 and 30, I believe, tells us a reason why Jesus performed his miracles. The Bible says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, here's why, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name amen so in other words if christ's miracles are more than just a show amen and they're more than just a temporary help to someone's life then the purpose for jesus's miracles hold an eternal value and an eternal purpose. It ends up becoming much more serious. Amen. Than just a blind man seeing again. And on top of all of this. John also records Jesus say this. In John 14 and 12. Verily, verily I say unto you. He that believeth on me. The works that I do. Shall he do also. And greater works than these. Shall he do? Because I go unto my Father. Amen. I wonder if anyone knows today uh, that when you have the Holy Ghost in your life, uh, amen, uh, that God wants to do the miraculous, uh, amen, through his body. Uh, God wants to do the miraculous through his people. Praise God. Amen. Come on. I believe that today. I've seen it happen. Come on, there might be people here today that you haven't seen it happen. But let me just tell you, uh, you just get to talking to some of the people in this church. uh, Let me tell you, we've seen it with our eyes. Uh, We've seen what God can do. Uh, We've seen the miracles that God can perform. Praise God. Amen. And, you know, I I wrote out the list of of, of his miracles in chronological order. I'm not going to go through every one of them. Amen. So don't be too worried. Amen. But let me just give you a few of them. Let me just give you a few of them. Amen. This is in in a chronological order. Amen. And so the first miracle we know Jesus performed was that he turns the water into wine at Cana of Galilee. After this, Jesus heals a nobleman's son at Capernaum. After that, Jesus drives out an evil spirit from a man in Capernaum. And Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. Amen. After this, and Jesus heals, the Bible says, many sick in Capernaum. Jesus' first miracle of his disciples catching a multitude of fish in the Sea of Galilee. Amen. Jesus heals a leper in Galilee. Jesus heals the centurion's uh, paralyzed servant in Capernaum. Jesus heals, heals the paralytic who was let down through the roof in Capernaum. Jesus heals a man's withered hand in Capernaum. Jesus raises a widow's son from the dead in Nain. Jesus calms the storm storm and raging sea on the sea of Gennesaret. Jesus casts the devils into the herd of swine in the gatherings. Jesus heals the woman with the issue of blood in Galilee. And Jesus raises Jairus' daughter from the dead in Capernaum. And there is much much more. Amen. But, but can I just tell you today that when Jesus performed a miracle, amen, he performed many of them. Listen for a second. He performed many of these miracles without any person's help or involvement. 
They were completely by himself. And can I tell you that Jesus could have chosen to do every single miracle by himself. He had the power. Amen. He's God, God in the flesh. But we do find, we do find that in some of Jesus' miracles that he performed, that he allowed for people to get involved in the process of the miracle. Amen. The very first miracle Jesus performed, amen, turning the water into wine. Mary, the mother of Jesus, gets a hold of a few servants and tells them this dilemma. Tells Jesus about the dilemma and says to the servants, do whatever he wants you to do. Amen. And so what did, what did Jesus tell them to do? Jesus says, fill the water pots with water. They did it. They filled them up to the brim, the Bible says. And then Jesus said unto them, all right, you filled it up to the brim. Now draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And guess what? The Bible says, and they bear it. Amen. Can I tell you today that by them doing what they did, they were not the ones turning the water into wine. But they had a part in the miracle that Jesus was doing. And I just believe, and I, I find it interesting, that it being Christ's first miracle, that he included servants' help. And I believe that what he was doing is he was setting a precedence for other miracles in the future. God working through us. Amen. Let me talk about another one here today. Amen. There was a crowd in a house that Jesus was preaching. The Bible says that there were so many people there. Amen. That there was not even enough room to receive them. The Bible says, no, not so much as about the door. And the Bible says he preached the word unto these people. And there was a man, the Bible says, that was sick of the palsy. Amen. And the Bible says that he had four good friends. Amen. The Bible says that he was laying on, on something. And, they were, and, and this man was born of four. In other words, he was carried by four people. Amen. We know the story. Amen. What happens? Amen. The Bible says that these four men bring the man because they realize that this building is too packed. Amen. Uh, to get to Jesus by just walking through the doorway. And so they climb up onto the top of the roof. Amen. And the Bible says that they opened up the roof and began to break it. Oh, come on, somebody. Began to break through the roof. And they brought their buddy that was sick of the palsy. And they brought him up. And the Bible says that they let him down to where Jesus was preaching. Amen. And the Bible says that when Jesus saw their faith. Oh, come on, somebody. This man had no help, no hope. Amen. He couldn't get to Jesus on his own. Amen. But when, come on somebody. Uh, but when these four saw the burden and they made his need uh, their need, uh, come on. Uh, and Jesus saw their faith. Uh, can I tell you what began to happen? Uh, is a miracle began to happen. Uh, and Jesus made that man whole. Uh, and not only made him whole, uh, but forgave him his sins. Uh, let me tell someone today uh, that if you're a part of the body of Christ, uh, you've got a part uh, in the miracle uh, you've got a job uh, in the miraculous uh, you've got a job oh come on I feel the Holy Ghost in this house tonight uh, you've got a job praise God amen 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 hallelujah amen when Jesus fed the 5,000 what happened amen there was a little boy that had five loaves and two fish. And the Bible says that this boy came to him and gave it to his disciples. Uh, amen. Let me just tell you, Jesus had power enough to just simply snap his finger. 
And every single one of those people that were hungry could have been instantly had food in his hands. Amen. I believe that God allowed this young man to be a part in the miraculous. But not just the young man. The Bible says that when Jesus began to perform the miracle of breaking the bread and multiplying it and breaking the fish. Amen. The Bible says he hands it to his disciples. Oh, hallelujah. You know what? Jesus could have instantly allowed all of that food to be in the hands of the people. But he said, no, you know what? I want to get my disciples involved. I want to get my people involved. And so he begins to pass it on to each of his disciples. Amen. As they went and they began, they began to feed the 5,000. Jesus performed the miracle, but they were a part of the miracle. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. What are you preaching, Brother Critcher? I'm preaching uh, to, oh, come on, uh, that every time you come into the house of God, uh, let me just tell you, there are people in the house uh, that need a miracle. Uh, there are people in the sanctuary uh, that need the Holy Ghost. Uh, there are people in the house uh, that have a need. Uh, but can I tell you, you've got a part. Uh, you've got a part uh, in the miraculous that God wants to perform. Oh, someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. It was, these weren't the only ones. Amen. Let me take you to the story. Amen. When Lazarus died. Amen. What happened? Jesus was four days late. Amen. Let me just tell you, Jesus is never late. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So he shows up to Bethany. Lazarus had already been dead four days. Amen. And so he begins to have conversation with Martha, Mary. Amen. And the Bible says that when he came to the tomb of Lazarus. Amen. Hear this tonight. He was groaning in himself. Why? Because there was deep sorrow in his heart for Lazarus being dead. Amen. But he's groaning in himself. The Bible says that. He was in a cave, Lazarus was. He was dead and he was in a cave and there was a stone that laid over the door of the cave or the mouth of the cave. You know what Jesus said? He said to the people there, he says, take away that stone. Come on somebody. And the Bible says that Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh for he hath been dead four days. Amen. Jesus begins to have conversation, basically saying, look, this is going to be for the glory of God. And then he begins to pray. Amen. And after this, Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. That was the miracle. Lazarus comes forth. Amen. Jesus didn't move the stone away. Someone else did. Because they were willing to move the stone away. So they did that. That was a part of the miracle. But not only that, the Bible says that when Lazarus came out, the Bible says he was bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about, the Bible says, with a napkin. In other words, he probably looked like a mummy. Praise God. But Jesus said probably to the same people that moved the stone away, he says, now loose him and let him go. I just want to tell someone here today, amen, come on, that Jesus is the one that is the resurrection. Come on, Jesus is the one, come on, that performs the miracle. But he wants his church, come on, he wants his people uh, to be the ones uh, that moves that stone out of the way. Uh, come on, and says, you know what? I'm going to be involved uh, with the miracle. Uh, but not only am I going to move the stone away, uh, but when he comes out uh, and he's resurrected, uh, I'm going to begin to loose him from his grave clothes. Uh, I'm going to take off uh, the identity uh, of death uh, that was upon his life. Uh, and I'm going to do a work uh, in the miraculous. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what this means? It just simply means, amen, that every time we come to the house of God, amen, let me just tell you that the flesh needs to be broken. 
Oh, come on. We've got to break up our fallow ground. Amen. It's the job of the body of Christ to come in and say, you know what? I may not even feel. Come on. I may not feel like getting with this service. Amen. But, but, but on the behalf of maybe some visitor coming into the house of God that needs the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pray anyway. Come on. And I'm going to worship anyway. And I'm going to lift up my hands even if I don't feel like it. Why? Because I'm going to create an atmosphere where the Spirit of God can come down and inhabit the praises of His people so that somebody's miracle can take place in their life. Oh, someone lift your hands to the Lord in this house. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't just see it with Christ's miracles, but we see it later on when, when the Apostle Paul was fleeing for his life. The Bible says uh, that people were after him, and there were some disciples. There were some disciples that let Paul down a wall in a basket. And they were holding the rope. Amen. I mean, you know what they were doing? They were playing a part. Come on, somebody. They were playing a part in the miraculous that God was trying to perform. Can I tell you that if Paul would have died right there, two-thirds of your New Testament would not be in your Bible. Amen. But these people, come on, somebody, they knew that we've got to get this man to where he needs to be. We've got, even if all I'm doing is letting down a rope, they were holding the rope. Amen. But they were playing a part in the miraculous that God wanted to perform through Paul. Praise God. Amen. But not only do we see it in the New Testament, we also see it in the Old Testament. Oh, let me show you. Amen. I love to talk about when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Amen. But guess what? When they got there to the Red Sea, Moses. Moses had a rod in his hand. I just want to ask you, what do you got in your hands today? Oh, come on. What is it that you're capable of doing? What's in your hand? Amen. Just like the, five, the, the boy with the five loaves and two fish, that's all he had. That's all he had. But God only wants what you have. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on. God only wants what you got. Oh, praise God. So Moses is here. Look, this is one of the biggest miracles that we see in the Word. Of, of God splitting the Red Sea in two. But guess what? God tells Moses, Moses, I want you to raise up your rod. Come on, somebody. Come on. Sometimes what that looks like is, is the people of God just lifting up their hands. Come on, somebody. And allowing God to begin to flow in the house of God. Come on. He wants to make a way for someone in this house tonight. He wants to fill someone with the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. He wants to change someone's life in the house tonight. But I wonder if there's anyone in the house of God that's willing to play a part, that's willing to push away the stone, that's willing to loose the grave clothes uh, that's willing to create an atmosphere uh, where the power and the presence of God uh, can come down uh, and God perform the miracle. Oh, someone lift your voice unto heaven right now. Oh, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Another moment, another time where Moses Amen. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. Amen. But they, the children of Israel were up against Amalek. Amen. And the Bible says that Moses was up on the, on the hillside. And as long as he kept, as long as he kept his hand lifted, then they noticed a wonderful thing. Amen. The children of Israel prevailed. Amen. But as Moses got weary, as Moses' hands began to come down, the Bible says that they, all of a sudden they began to see the opposite effect. And the children of Israel started to kind of lose some people in the battle. Amen. So what did Aaron and Hur do? 
Oh, come on. They realized and they understood that as long as Moses' hands could be kept up high. Oh, come on, somebody. As long as his hands were lifted up, come on, then the children of Israel would prevail and ultimately have the victory. So the Bible says what they did is they carried a stone over to Moses and said, Moses, keep your hands up. Please keep your hands up because we're winning right now with your hands up. But sit down and let us help you keep your hands up. Let us help you keep your arms in the air because as long as you're doing it, we're winning. As long as you have your hands up. Hands up, Moses. Uh, we're winning. Uh, come on. I wonder if there's anyone here today uh, that's willing to keep the hands of your man of God up uh, and say, you know what, Pastor? We want revival in this city. Uh, we want Holy Ghost filled revival in this house. Uh, I'm going to keep your hands up. Uh, I'm going to be a support uh, so that we see a miraculous thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One of my favorite stories in the Word of God is the story of Gideon. And I've talked about it here recently. But let me just, let me just point this out. That when Gideon, when Gideon was preparing his 300 men up against thousands. Amen. Thousands. According to logic... They had this much chance of winning. That much. Amen. But can I tell you what Gideon realized was so revelatory, powerful. Amen. Gideon got his men prepared for battle. Amen. They were ready. They had their pitchers. They had their lamps inside. They had their trumpets. Amen. I saw a brother blowing the trumpet back there. Amen. Can I tell you, it's part of praise. That's part of your job. Come on, somebody. Come on. Amen. But can I tell you what began to happen is Gideon tells his men. He says, this is, I want you to say something. When we break these pitchers and our lanterns are showing out, amen, I want you to say something. Here's the statement that he tells them to say. He says, when you're going to say this, you say the sword of the Lord, but also the sword of Gideon. Come on. Can I tell you that we've got a job? Can I tell you, was it just God's sword? Yes, God could have done it. But can I tell you, God, God did do it. Amen. But he did it through them. They did, he, God did it through a people that was willing and available to say, you know what, God, I'm going to put my hand in your hand. And there's souls that need saved. There's people that need deliverance. There's people in the house that need to be set free from drug addictions. There's people in the house that need to be set free of things that they can't set themselves free by themselves. Let me tell you, you've got a job you've got a part you've got a part praise God the Bible says that we are the body of Christ we are his hands and we are his feet he performs the work but he wants us to be a part of the miraculous amen can I tell you today that Jesus said in Matthew 28 and 18, he says, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And then he says, because of this, or go ye therefore. Because Jesus had all power, he says, go ye therefore, teaching all nations and baptizing them. Because he had all power. Amen. But you know what else Jesus says? He says, amen, that the Bible says in Mark 16 and 15, Jesus said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And the Bible says, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. I just want to tell someone today that you've got a part. You've got a part. We have a job. Can I tell someone today, it takes unity in the service. 
Guess what? That's part of your responsibility. Come on. Come on. I've, we, when we come up to the house of God, uh, amen. Come on, somebody. Uh, it's, it's your responsibility uh, to say, you know what? Is there any divisions inside of me uh, that is against my brother or my sister? Uh, because I know that if there is, uh, it's going to quench the spirit. Uh, and someone's miracle may not take place uh, because of this very division. Uh, come on. Uh, it also takes uh, support. Uh, come on. It takes uh, a consecrated lifestyle. Uh, you know what else it takes? It takes pre-service prayer. Uh, come on. Uh, why? Because this is our job uh, in the miracle uh, that he wants to do in somebody's life. Uh, he wants to help somebody. Uh, but we have a job. We have a job. I wonder if we could all stand here today. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just... Let me just say this, tonight there may be someone that doesn't have the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Holy Ghost is a miracle of God. It's the miraculous. I can't fill you, your pastor can't fill you, your brother can't fill you, only God can fill you. But let me just say this, you have a part in the miracle of receiving the Holy Ghost. Our job is to repent. Come on, that's our job, is to repent. That's something you do. And when you're baptized in Jesus' name, that's something that you and your pastor does. That's our job. And then God performs the miraculous of filling you with the Holy Ghost. We have a job. We have a job in his miracle. Amen. I just want to give this last example here. Amen. But when Joshua and the children of Israel come against Jericho, amen, those walls were big. They rode chariots on top of those walls. They were so big. Can I tell you, it was an obstacle between them and the promised land. The Lord speaks to Joshua and says, this is what I want you to do. Oh. Come on. He says, Joshua, take your people. Walk around, march around these walls. This is part of your job marching around the wall seven days and on the seventh day oh hallelujah I feel the Holy Ghost in this place right now on the seventh day walk around those walls seven times and on the seventh time when you've gotten around those walls here's another part of the instructions for the miracle you're going to blow the trumpet Oh, hallelujah. And you're going to shout with a voice of triumph. You know what? It wasn't their shout that broke the walls down. It was God. But they played a part. They played their part. Come on, somebody. They played their part. Come on. I wonder if there's anyone in the house today that feels the weight of responsibility on your shoulders right now. Come on, if you feel that weight of responsibility that God wants to perform a miracle in someone's life tonight. Come on, I wonder if we can lift up an atmosphere of worship to the Lord in this house. Come on, that we are playing our part for someone to be changed, for someone to receive a miracle, for someone to be delivered. Come on, if you have a need tonight, if you need God to give you a miracle, I want you to come forth to the front right now, and we're going to pray with you that God reaches down and does a miracle in your life. Come on, somebody, everyone lift your hands unto the Lord in this house. We've got a job. Come on, we've got a job. 
when the miracle that God wants to perform in your life, we've come on, body of Christ. Come on, church. Come on, why don't you find somebody to pray with? Come on, why don't you find somebody to pray for? Come on, somebody. God wants to do a work. God wants to perform a miracle. Come on. But we got a job. We have a job. We have a job. Somebody shout with a voice of triumph unto God. Somebody shout. Oh, come on, come on, come on, church. We have a job. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Somebody roll away the stone. Come on, somebody remove the grave clothes. Come on, somebody break the bread and pass it out. Come on, somebody 